All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch and you had some interesting conversations with your lunch partners. Uh, up next, we have Chris, who... Name only. <laughs> Why? No, no. That, that I've, makes been, me more I've been introducing people, first name only, like all, all day. Um, who used to be my boss when I was at Kinfolk. <laughs> uh, Did you tell his last name? <laughs> <laughs> his last name is cool because he's so cool. Wow. All right, so Chris is going to tell us about Inspector Gadget uh, and everything about it and how, like, using eBPF, you can learn more about what's going on in Kubernetes and not Kubernetes as well. Okay. Thank you, Marga. Welcome, Chris. Who used to be the engineering manager for the Inspector Gadget right. project. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I think this will even have new stuff for you, Marga, okay? Okay, okay. So let me figure out how to advance. There you go. So I am Chris Cool. My wife makes fun, uh, fun of me because I took her name and I can't actually pronounce it correctly in German. Uh, I just say cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm a technical program manager at Microsoft. I was formerly founder and CEO at Kinfolk. Uh, what is it? I think your mic is too far away. Is it too far away? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me back there, Timo? Yes. All good? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was formerly founder and CEO at Kinfolk, and I'm one of the founders of this conference. So there we go. Um, today we're going to talk about a, um, Inspector Gadget. We're going to do a quick introduction, but that's not really the focus of this talk. It's um, we're going to look at uh, some of the fundamentals of what Inspector Gadget does and why that has driven some of the recent features um, that we have been introducing. And we'll, then we'll talk at the end about some upcoming enhancements and updates that have not yet landed, but will. Um, and then we'll have some Q&A, where hopefully you have some questions. So along the way, you can either ask them directly, or you can wait till the end. Let's get going. So you can't do an eBPF uh, talk unless you're at a specific eBPF conference, uh, unless you actually introduce eBPF a little bit. So eBPF, they are programs, uh, basically bytecode, that's loaded into the Linux kernel. They're attached to different points, trace points, k-probes, et cetera, and they run when events happen. Um, eBPF programs can place data in eBPF maps, um, ring buffers, and then that data is then pulled out uh, on the user space side from a user space program. Um, Inspector Gadget takes care of quite a bit of that. Um, eBPF programs uh, stay in the kernel context. That means they're very fast, so there's no context switching um, there. And eBPF, pro eBPF programs are safe. They run at a VM. Uh, they are, um, they're basically guaranteed not to crash your kernel. Um, they are kind of restricted in what they can do. They used to not be able to run loops. Uh, now you can run some types of loops. Um, and you know, that's being expanded uh, as they find safe ways to do that. Um, but yeah, in general, eBPF programs are not always, but usually running only in the kernel, um, and uh, they're very fast, and you can get information that you normally cannot get from the system. So an interest, quick introduction to Inspector Gadget itself. Uh, we call it Inspector Gadget because we call the BPF programs uh, that you use um, gadgets. And so you load different gadgets, um, and you use those uh, with Inspector Gadget. Um, it collects low-level kernel data, and very importantly, it enriches this data. Uh, we call it enrichment because basically when you get information from the Linux kernel, it gives it to you from its perspective. Uh, the Linux kernel does not know about containers. It does not know about Kubernetes. Uh, these are higher level concepts um, that are, are not um, you know, kernel concepts. And so Inspector Gadget enriches uh, what it gives you uh, by mapping these. Um, and a little bit of history. If you've, uh, you know, we, we saw this project uh, by Brendan Greggs from Netflix uh, called BCC. It was basically a very large collection of uh, eBPF programs uh, that do many different things. And we thought that would be really good to have in Kubernetes. And like I said, eBPF doesn't really understand containers and uh, Kubernetes, so you need some kind of mapping. And so that's why we created Inspector Gadget. Um, and here is, for example, the famous uh, diagram or a graphic uh, from the BCC project showing many of the, the programs they have and how they are 
uh, basically, um, you know, the points at which they are attached inside the kernel. And you'll notice that some at the top are actually outside of the kernel because you can't have user space probes. Um, but generally, I'm going to be talking about um, kernel probes or uh, eBPF programs that run in the kernel. So we have a similar one uh, that obviously doesn't have as many things because not everything is, is, is um, needed inside of Inspector Gadget or we haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, and this shows how uh, the gadgets that we have are, um, you know, how they are associated with things inside the kernel. So let's give a little example. This is a very simple one. It's showing uh, how you can use um, Inspector Gadget to see the new processes that are being started. Here we have a pod, it's called my pod, and we are running the trace exec gadget. Uh, and you can actually filter on certain columns. And so here we have um, basically are running a, a, a we're basically running a, a loop that's uh, sleeping. And so you see that in the output. We'll look at it one more time so you get another chance. Dun -dun. We're running for four seconds. So. So very simple. You can do this across a large cluster, though. Um, here's another gadget we have. This is a profile gadget. As you can see, we have different categories for these. Um, the profile gadget will give you basically statistics. Um, you can see here we have, we're running the block IO profile uh, on the worker node. And we're running this for about a minute. And then when you quit it, um, it will output this histogram. You can also get this in, in JSON format. So that's just two examples. Um, we, basically, the gadgets are built-in eBPF programs. Um, we have six categories. We have the advise gadget, which is, um, it basically observes the system, and then it will output a, for example, a YAML file. We have a network policy advisor uh, that will observe the traffic in your system, and then it will generate um, a, a, network, um, policy, um, a network policy for you to apply. And so that's the kind of thing that advice does. We also have one for a setcom. Uh, we have an audit uh, category. And currently, we only have one gadget in there, um, but we will be expanding that. And for example, the one we have in there will tell you when a call gets uh, blocked uh, due to a setcom policy. Um, so it's kind of the opposite of the advice one. Um, we have profile gadgets. Uh, and these observe the system, like you saw with the block IO example. And it returns um, you know, some kind of statistic on it. We have one uh, profile CPU one, which will give you the information that you need, for example, to create a flame graph. We have snapshot, which is one off, like if you want to see the sockets that are open, the files that are open, things like that. We have a top category, which is um, sorted, incrementally updated table of information like you would know um, from a Unix top command. Uh, but we have this for different things. We have trace ones. And now the trace category is the one that is the most uh, populated with gadgets. Um, and basically, you provide a stream of events that are happening on your system. Uh, for example, TCP connect or something like that. And then we have two standalone gadgets. We have a very new one that I'll be getting into a little bit later. Uh, it's called Script. Um, and that is a domain-specific language for Inspector Gadget. Uh, and we'll jump to that, so I won't say much more about that. And then we have one of my favorites called Trace Loop. Uh, so everybody familiar with S-Trace? Yeah, hands, nods, good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Trace Loop is basically like S-Trace, uh, but it can run. Um, it basically uh, runs as an eBPF program. It puts the information into a ring buffer. This is kind of, we, we kind of think of it as a black box uh, for your cluster. Um, you can, um, because it puts this information into a ring buffer, even when the application stops, you can still pull it out. That means you can automate this, for example, to say, my um, I'm running trace loop, my application crashed, and then you can pull that out, and you have basically the, uh, you know, like a black box for that application. So. And it's very fast because it's running in BPF. But I started that talk kind of like we usually talk about um, uh, Inspector Gadget. We go into demos and things like that. But we've been making a lot of changes, and these, which has been reflections on the fundamentals for what we provide. Um, and so I want to get into that more. So um, let's take a look at what the fundamentals are that Inspector Gadget does. So we have a mechanism for packaging and distributing eBPF programs. We have plumbing for collecting information from the kernel and presenting it. And we have enrichment of kernel data with high-level Kubernetes container information. 
Um, this is for, because you don't want your information to be shown in the perspective of the kernel. You want to see it in the perspective of how you know your system of Kubernetes, containers, things like that. And so, with these fundamental things, we basically stepped back and we started asking some questions. And when we were asking these questions, it kind of motivated us to think differently about Inspector Gadget. So, for packaging and distribution, what if we were to focus on Inspector Gadget as a means to package and distribute eBPF programs, and not only the ones that we build in? How would supporting, um, or would supporting only Kubernetes be enough if we were to do that? And how could users create custom gadgets? So they can basically create their own gadget and then use the plumbing, the enrichment that we have uh, to um, uh, basically plug into that. Plumbing, how, would we, how could we make maximum use of the plumbing layer? And how can we provide additional ways of interacting with it? And again, why only Kubernetes for this plumbing layer? And lastly, enrichment. How can we make this enrichment as general as possible? And many eBPF tools exist that know nothing about containers and Kubernetes and are very useful. So can Inspector Gadget be a general uh, enrichment tool for eBPF programs? And so, from, those, from that thinking, we actually have been adding uh, features, uh, and all of this actually, actually landed in, actually um, two of these have landed already. One of them will land uh, in the next week or so, and another one within the month. Um, so, um, yeah, so we have custom eBPF programs, which we are introducing. Uh, we have a domain-specific language, which we have introduced. Uh, we have IG, which is the CLI tool for Linux host without running on Kubernetes, uh, and Prometheus metrics and uh, gRPC API. And so let's talk a little bit about each of these. And warning, like I just said, uh, this does contain forward-looking statements. Uh, not everything is stable. Not everything is, everything I'm talking about is actively being worked on. Um, and so even the things that have landed are in an early stage, and I'll point that out. Um, or they are in, uh, you know, um, it's basically a development branch and will be uh, in the main branch soon. So, custom eBPF programs uh, with the BYOB uh, gadget. It's not bring your own beer, it's bring your own BPF. And um, this allows you to write your own eBPF programs and use them in Inspector Gadget uh, with the enrichment, uh, et cetera. Um, it uses uh, Solo IO's uh, Bumblebee project because what Solo IO's uh, Bumblebee project does um, is it basically can take um, a BPF uh, programs and put them into OCI images, uh, which we thought was pretty interesting. And so this uses OCI images, uh, and it will um, and we'll, we're first implementing this in the trace gadget. Um, so. Each, each category that I was introducing before has a certain way that it works, a certain you know, behavior. And so um, we need to make sure when somebody creates a custom gadget that they identify which uh, behavior that should match with and put it in the right thing. So generally what you'll see is um, the category trace, for example, and then would be BYOB for the gadget, and then just like this. So, and you, and you actually notice here in this command line, it's actually, this is using IG, uh, which is the Linux command line tool, and not the uh, kubectl gadget, which is what you inter interact with um, Kubernetes with. Um, it's just easier for, for testing. Um, and so, we use IG, IG trace BYOB, and then you define the OCI image, and in this case, uh, it defines the example image that the Bumblebee project has called TCP Connect, uh, and it's uh, defining it as use, use the Docker uh, runtime. Um, and so it is loading this, and then here you can see their destination and source addresses. And so this is a custom eBPF program running in um, Inspector Gadget with the uh, needed enrichment. So there's quite a bit of work to do there. That has not landed in main yet, uh, but this is one of the things I'm quite excited about. So, because eventually this will also be plugged into the Prometheus exporting um, the, um, and other ways of interacting with it. So scripting B via uh, the BPF trace integration. So there's a project called BPF trace, which um, if, is anybody familiar with uh, Dtrace from Solaris? 
Uh, yeah, so BPF trace is a way to kind of relive that uh, on Linux in the Linux world. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a program, there's a project called Cube uh, CTL Trace, uh, which also provides this functionality of of it basically exposes BPF trace, a scripting language for uh, BPF programs. Um, and the kubectl trace basically exposes that to Kubernetes, right? Uh, but, but even the kubectl trace doesn't have any concepts of containers or Kubernetes. It just basically gives you the process ID and things like that. And so in this first, uh, what we already have in the main branch, um, it's basically just using BPF pro um, trace programs, uh, just like the kubectl trace was. Uh, but this will next, in the next phase of this, we will be um, adding the enrichment so that you can uh, you reference containers, uh, you'll get back information about the, kubes, um, the Kubernetes cluster, um, et cetera. Um, so this will be uh, you know, basically a scriptable way to interact with and, um, Inspector Gadget and use its enrichment and plumbing. So it's not its own ESL, it's BPF trace ESL? It is currently, uh, the question was, is this its own uh, DSL or is it just BPF trace? It is currently one to one BPF trace. The next phase will add a container and Q, Q, um, Kubernetes enrichment, which will then diverge. Um, and, we, you know, and, and then we are actually, the last line here, it says we'll build this out based on feedback. So I think there's gonna be a lot of interesting stuff that we can build actually on top of that because we have multiple gadgets working here and it might be that we want to tap into another gadget or I, I, don't, I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll, uh, you know, that's something that I think is already very useful to just be do the scripting with the enrichment. Just that is very really useful. Um, anything we add on to it will just be, you know, the jam on top. All right, so here's uh, an example of this. So this is like counting the syscalls uh, for a program, by program. And so um, here we do gadget script, uh, dash E will, is basically uh, giving it the uh, script. And here's a, like a one-liner. You can also have files which lo with longer of these. And the BPF trace uh, uh, project has a bunch of these. And so you can just copy paste and, and use those as is. Um, so you know, this is just an example. Um, it's script, so you can do what you want to with it in the limits of you know, uh, what it has. And we're learning more about those limits as we go along and trying to expand that. So, and the last main thing here that I have uh, is IG. Um, it's very confusing in the project because we often, we often uh, refer to the project as IG also, but we've started referring to big IG as the project and small IG as the CLI tool. So it's a little bit confusing. Uh, but now you can run this. Um, this basically works on Linux hosts. Um, the previous way, only way you could use this is with kubectl gadget, um, and that would interact, that would basically send an API call. It basically works over the, uh, the Kubernetes API server. Um, this now runs directly on Linux host. It does the enrichment with containers and Kubernetes. Uh, there are some limitations now, but this is very early and being built out. Um, but in general, it works very nicely and you have access to the gadgets that make sense. There's some that don't make sense, uh, and so they're not included in the IG thing, like the advised ones, because um, you, you should be running on a Kubernetes cluster for that. Uh, but in general, this is quite nice. Um, so yeah, we had, we had people asking us, okay, how do, I, how do I use this without when the API server is down? Of course, if kubectl gadget relies on the API server. And we, at first we were saying, we, well, yeah, you can't use this. Uh, but then we started thinking, and we had this tool called local gadget, uh, which we were using for debugging and testing, because a lot of times you don't want to spin up a Kubernetes cluster just to uh, test a change in one of the gadgets you rewrote. Um, and so that actually, that conversation, and that tool that already existed, uh, you know, kind of those ideas came together, and that's where IG came. And so, in the converse uh, to the other tools we're trying to add enrichment, with this tool, because we want to learn, run on um, host, uh, we are actually doing the opposite. We are uh, going to be adding host process support because. You know, for those who know about containers a little bit, a host process is, you know, similar to containers, is running also in a namespace in C groups. They're just the default for the system. Um, so we should be able to, you know, um, th what, this is very interesting because basically it gives you one tool that understands host processes, containers, and Kubernetes. And so that's going to open up a lot of interesting things. Uh, we, and for the, the last release, we packaged this for Debian and Fedora-based systems. If you are a maintainer of a distro and you would like to include this there, that would be, please talk to me later. Or just do it. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so yeah, with, with these changes, you know, and, and the introduce, introduction of these, uh, you know, especially IG, you know, Inspector Gadget project will have support across Linux hosts, processes, containers, Kubernetes. And, you know, we had a conversation the other day in the project uh, about, you know, you have these tools like, you know, you have top, you have kubectl top, you have docker stat. Uh, they're all specific to these uh, domains. Um, you know, with this kind of functionality, there's no reason why we can't have something like IG top that basically gives you all that same information across every single bit of this and understands if, the, if it's running in a Kubernetes cluster or if it's just running a standalone container or if it's a host. So it's quite, it's quite interesting what this is opening up just starting as we start down this road. So, and the last thing, which is uh, being actively worked on because we're trying to make sure we do the Prometheus metrics part right, is that we're trying to add, um, you know, expand how users can interface with Inspector Gadget. Uh, we've added a gRPC API uh, to make it easier to, you know, build things on top of Inspector Gadget. Uh, and then we had a lot of people, you know, Inspector Gadget was originally um, an interactive tool, and usually that's how you, that's often how you use it, um, you, on the command line or whatever. Uh, but there's no reason why you can't get that information uh, from these gadgets in a in a you know a long running process and collect metrics from them. And so what we're trying to do now is we're or we're well on our way actually, um, is adding Prometheus support. And so we're quite excited about this because we've had a lot of folks asking for it. Um, and it will support like the filtering, like how you filter columns. You can just say, okay, just give me this information, and it does the enrichment. Um, and we want this to work also on the with the custom BPF programs, uh, the BYOB stuff. Um, and so we are actually this kind of selfish because we're we have another project we work on called Headlamp, and we're going to be um, um, using Inspector Gadget under the hood to get a lot of information on that Kubernetes UI. Um, so these are the kind of things that we need in that, and. Um, uh, other other folks have been asking for. So, and some other small, or not small, because all, all of these are a lot of work. Uh, we are still expanding the... What is it? Is it all good? Okay, so we are still expanding the collection of built-in gadgets. Uh, network gadgets are something we're focused on right now. We just added one for TCP drop, uh, when, for packs that are dropped. Um, and, you know, we, these are things we add, like, you usually get, like, once every month or two, because we're working on a lot of other stuff, and, and this is, um, you know, we, we work on those and, and make them, uh, you know, kind of expanding the scope of the built-in gadgets that we have. Uh, but one very interesting thing, because, you know, we work at Microsoft. Uh, we have some folks with very large clusters. And uh, so we want to understand, uh, for example, where Inspector Gadget breaks. Um, what's the performance limits? How can we improve those and optimize them? So we just added uh, benchmarking to the CI. Uh, and so we want to use that as a baseline uh, for making optimizations going forward and me measuring um, so that we can see how this improves or degrades uh, over time. So... And Inspector Gadget has been submitted to the CNCF, and we, we actually got the votes we needed, uh, but there was another process after that uh, to make sure it's all, all good before it can actually enter. So we're happy about that. And basically, we want to make Inspector Gadget a uniquely complete tool for eBPF systems inspection. Thank you. Q&A. <laughs> Questions, questions. Yeah, um, it reminds me of uh, Sys Internals by Mark Rosinovich. Uh, have you been able to talk with him or, you know, maybe sit with him? He might have some ideas. Of our, you mean our, our CEO? I mean, CTO? I don't know what his role is, but I know he wrote uh, <laughs> I, I have not. I have not myself, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, he might be, uh, you know, and quite in, it, from his per, personal perspective, mm. I think he would be interested in this project. Yeah. I don't know about his role. Uh, mm. I left Microsoft a long time ago. So. Okay, okay. Uh, and another question is, do you still need another uh, kernel for this? Or is there, uh, I, you mentioned something about Debian. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy nowadays because, um, you know, a lot of people are using eBPF and it was a problem that was like, you know, okay, is this going to work on this kernel? Do I have to compile it for that? Uh, nowadays, and Marga knows this just as well because you were uh, uh, leading the project at the time, you know, we had some engineers who basically um, worked 
were, were part of the team who were basically improving the situation. So now you basically have this like compile once, run anywhere kind of thing. Uh, and so it's not really a problem anymore. Um, we have, uh, what's, the, what's the tool called, Maga? Uh, the, the BTF. What Mauricio was working on. Yeah, so the, the tool relies uh, B, on BTF, BTF and the tool, tool is, yeah. 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 BTF yeah, so we've integrated with BTF tool, and that's all upstream, and like you know, it's like a whole. It's not just us; it's the whole um, ecosystem is working off of that. So, yeah, yeah. Alex, of your um, end users that you're talking about, what are they doing with Inspector Gadget or with eBPF programs that they're writing through this? Say it again. Sorry. What is the use case for um, Inspector Gadget? What are your end users doing with it? Uh, well, a lot of it's troubleshooting uh, applic um, troubleshooting issues. If if they if they suspect something's happening, uh, you can basically you know if you if you pull up, I don't I don't have the list of um, of gadgets here, but we have gadgets. We have like what twenty or so, uh, and they can all look at different things, right? You can see uh, you know Block IO uh, will give you tell you if you got something slowing down. Uh, you know you can yeah. So it, it's basically a lot of various. Um, you know, debugging and troubleshooting is, is what they're using now. Is, so. is this only sort of uh, reactive, or are you going to have like proactive monitoring? Think about what. Yeah. yeah. So this is Falco what I would... does, for instance. Are you, you going to be playing in that space? Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. It's it's um, it's been traditionally more of an interactive thing, uh, or something where you fire when you when something you want to inspect something. Uh, but with the introduction of the Prometheus uh, stuff, then that's going to be more of something running in the background and and uh, you know collecting information. Um, and also with IG, um, we are already talking to teams who are looking to create uh, use this as part of an agent that's running. So yeah. Last question. I'll let this. Microphone go. Um, are there any privileges that you need to be able to install that eBPF program? Yeah, I mean these run as privileged um, 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 the, the uh, Yeah, you have to. Yeah. So you can just have eBPF on its own. You don't need a privileged container. Or is that a Linux capability? You can just add with a granular level, or do you have to go for a privileged pod? Yeah, Margaret, you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, you, so in, to install BPF programs, you need a uh, CAP BPF, and then you also need CAP sysadmin. So yeah, basically you need privileges. Yeah, you're not going to get around that. So we do run it in, our, in gadgets and the Kubernetes cluster in its own namespace. Um, so that's a little bit you know isolated there. So. So if I understand that correctly, you're trying to actually. Uh, ramp up transparency, uh, making it more uh, convenient on Kubernetes level to monitor and debug all the um, stuff that's uh, um, lying on infrastructure levels. Have you, have you found any boundaries there yet? I mean, there are a lot of stuff in infrastructure, storage, all that stuff. Or, um, is it just like um, on a VM level uh, right now? Well, I mean, anything that's happening in the kernel that you can get from a BPF program, you can, uh, you know, if it doesn't exist, you can access it. So. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so uh, if you're creative, you can usually get your hands on what you need if you're uh, looking for something. And, and generally, BPF is so popular now that generally there are, there's something written already that you can pull from another project or collaborate with fo other folks to you know, expand existing stuff. So yeah. Any more questions? Looks up. That's it. Thank so, you, Chris. Thank you, folks. <laughs>